want to get your thoughts on what you have seen uh, in not only the fourth quarter, but in 2020. Obviously, we've seen um, forbearance pro programs that have been extended uh, with all of the stimulus pack packages that have been rolling out. But in general, just looking at your properties around the country and I guess the demographics of folks that are renting them, what are you seeing in terms of payments? Well, it's been interesting. I think we've had, you know, month over month acceleration really since the beginning of 2020. We finished the year far north of 98% from an occupancy perspective. And while we've had this, you know, tremendous amount of demand, we've certainly been having to meet the needs and work with residents that have been impacted by COVID-19. So that's been a real balancing act. And I think fortunately for us, uh, while the demand's been there, you know, working with the different municipalities, trying to make sure that our residents, most importantly, are looked after in a proper way. We've probably worked now with over a couple thousand families in restructuring or forgiving uh, you know, past due rents and things like that. And we're fortunate, given the size of our business, that we can weather that. I do have some concerns about smaller landlords that are out there that are kind of stuck in the middle, that are having to kind of you know, strike that balance. So I think it's important that the administration continues to work with housing experts to find and, and strike that right balance, right balance between helping with you know, additional stimulus for renters that are facing hardship, but also making sure that landlords have the protections they need because again, they pay you know, property taxes and insurance and things like that. So finding that balance has been really tricky, but demand is really, really strong. Yeah, in terms of finding that balance, I mean, we keep hearing that it's a seller's market right now, especially in the suburbs around big metro areas. And yet it looks like you're continuing to buy properties, why? Well, two things really. First, this millennial cohort of people that are between the ages of 22 and 36. There's roughly 65 million people that are coming our way into kind of our target demographic. And these people want flexibility of choice. And so as you take a step back, remember, a third of the country leases something in some way, shape or form every year. And I think the ability to have a quality experience in a nice single family home, but not have the burden, burdening nature of down payment or ownership you know, implications with maintenance and things like that can be quite appealing to people. And so we offer a service that that quite frankly, people have been choosing for hundreds of years, but nobody's had the scale and size that can do it as efficiently and offer the suite of services that we can in today's environment. About the competitive threat from the purchase market, uh, I would have to imagine uh, it's, it's subdued because of the lack of inventory. And it's hard, I, at least I would think, that that picture is going to be a, a big shift to turn around to where you're actually seeing either higher churn or less interest because the purchase market got that much better. You're right. Supply is at all-time lows in terms of, of where you're seeing that inventory. And a lot of this has to do with the fact that, you know, 2008 and 9, the great housing slump, you know, had everybody kind of rein in their focus in terms of not overbuilding in parts of the country. So we, we feel the same way. We think that supply will stay relatively tight. But with that being said, we're active every day. And so in the fourth quarter, we, we were able to almost buy 1,200 homes, add to our portfolio. We feel really good about the opportunities we're seeing in front of us. And we're going to continue to find ways to, to grow our portfolio because the demand's telling us that we need to. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.